Welcome back folks. Today we're harvesting and canning some vegetables. This is the first year we've had enough abundance in the garden to make pressure canning worthwhile. For those of you who enjoy seeing what we're up to in our day to day, I will take you through my process and discuss some of the honest challenges of putting up so much food. So the carrots in my garden have performed exceptionally this year. I've been enjoying two varieties of carrots, Danvers and Short and Sweet, which look similar though the Danvers are usually a bit longer. Either way, these carrots are lovely and they taste so sweet after a light frost. Luckily for me, most of them are unblemished, one of the very few things in my garden that didn't struggle with pests this year. Pressure canning requires attentiveness. There's really not much multitasking you should do during the process. So I've been learning to try to have as much prep done as possible before canning. This usually includes harvesting, washing, and preparing the vegetables the day before. This can change whether the whole process takes half the day or just two hours or so. I've also learned over the last few years that I can keep my kitchen much cleaner in preparation for canning by doing most of the vegetable processing outside. Our clothes washing station now doubles as a vegetable washing station. I usually do a preliminary rinse and use a vegetable scrubber to get any dirt I missed once inside. It's been a slow and steady process working up our homestead to the point where pressure canning even makes sense. My attitude has been that if you have a little of something, eat it as it's ready. If you have a bit extra, you can refrigerate or freeze it. And if you have more than you know what to do with, that's when water bath canning, pressure canning, or dehydrating makes sense. Pressure canning is so much work that to me it's not worth doing unless you're doing large batches that fill most of the canner. I know others that simply prefer to freeze almost everything, and we do have a medium-sized freezer separate from our main fridge, but certainly not enough to fit a year's worth of food. Moreover, we lose power too often for me to risk all of that food spoiling if we can't keep it properly frozen. I've decided to do quart jars of vegetable soup with carrots, onions, potatoes, green beans, and garlic mixed together in chicken broth. In the past, I've always kept at least a dozen cans of Progresso and Campbell's soups in my pantry for those days when Christopher and I are not feeling well or are too busy to cook. It's important to me that when we're sick, we still eat as healthy as possible rather than resorting to takeout or fast food. I'm super guilty of getting pizza or Burger King when I'm not in the mood to cook, something I tend to regret later. I'm also still relatively new to pressure canning. In past years, I've practiced with low-risk, high-acid foods like sauerkraut until I got comfortable and familiar with the process. I'd like to get the gut health benefits of sauerkraut this year by not canning, so we are moving on to more traditionally pressure canned foods like mixed vegetables and green beans. Every time I'm in front of the cutting board, I think about what a privilege it is to have the time and resources to pursue a healthier, more self-sufficient lifestyle. I want to point out, in light of the growing community of homesteaders and quote-unquote traditional living YouTube channels, there's also a growing misconception about how easy or hard it is to homestead, and I found that it's making people who are trying their best feel like their best isn't good enough. So I'd like to just be a little bit more transparent about my own situation. While I am really proud of how far I've come, my situation may not be like yours. I work remotely and I have a flexible job with generous vacation time and that allows me more time in my garden to take care of homestead chores. I'm also not taking care of small children, livestock, or have really any other responsibilities outside of my job and my homestead. What we've accomplished is because we are able to put most of our time and resources towards this, and while I am absolutely proud of our lifestyle decisions and how far we've come, I know that there are many other factors that allowed this to be so. So please don't compare yourself to me or any other YouTuber. Some folks have lots of extra money, resources, help, or simply years of experience. Others are working around other responsibilities, simply doing the best with the time that they have and learning as they go. 
We love having roast chicken and we try not to let any of the chicken go to waste, so I've boiled what remains of the carcass and we'll be keeping the extra meat for meals this week and we'll use the broth in my sick day soup. The soup is great for using up the veggies in your garden that are blemished or can't be stored. I'm cutting up our onions that I pulled early because of white rot. As you can see, some of these still didn't make it into my soup before the white rot spread into the onion. They look mostly fine on the outside, but these onions would all rot and spoil like this one if I tried to store them for much longer. If you've watched most of my videos, you've probably seen me mention more than once that I hate measuring and prefer to eyeball things when I cook or make herbal medicine. Part of my growth in the past few years has been learning that there is merit to measuring beyond its necessity in things like baking. You can't really eyeball how much food you'll need to feed your family for an entire year. So I've been practicing being more conscious about portion sizes to understand how much we actually eat in a single meal or in a week. I also want to be able to make recipes for pressure canning so that I can repeat whatever is successful or adjust something if I find that it's maybe too salty without having to guess at what I did the previous year. So I guess I've become a bit more disciplined in my approach. Perhaps it's all part of growing up. We're going to add some sage and salt for seasoning. Quart jars have been kept warm in the pressure canner with the lid off in some simmering water. Now to fill our sick day soup. When I first started canning and putting up food, I started off with a mix of veggies from my own garden and stuff we bought from the store. I think when you're first starting, this is a good way to practice without overwhelming yourself with the entirety of the process. Mark Valencia from Self Sufficient Me has a great way of putting this. You don't have to be self-sufficient in everything, but try to be self-sufficient in one thing at a time. The first crop we've managed to produce enough of without needing to buy more at the store throughout the year was garlic, then winter squash, and now carrots and green beans. Our medicine garden also produces more than enough for teas and herbal remedies, and I'm very pleased with our well-stocked apothecary with enough vacuum-sealed herbs to potentially last us an additional year. We were hoping to produce enough potatoes to feed us for a year, which for Chris and I is about 120 pounds or so, but we've had a bad potato harvest due to potato blight, as well as uh, me once again underestimating how many potatoes I'd need to achieve a 120 pound harvest. Still, each year we are getting better and better at this and learning so much along the way about how to manage our garden more efficiently. I'd love to learn more about how everyone else is approaching self-sufficiency. So how do you define it and measure your own success? Have you had to adjust your goals and expectations because of life situations? What was the first herb or vegetable you had so much of you stopped needing to buy it at the grocery store? I'd love it if you'd share it in the comments below. Y'all know how much I love hearing from you. So my next video will be an herbal medicine video all about herbs that help with headaches and migraines. I got to try making a brand new herbal product to add to my apothecary, herbal hydrosols, which I am falling in love with. The process is so fun and I cannot wait to share more about it. Thank you so much for watching. Happy harvest and I will see you all very soon.